Hello everybody, this is Greg aka Crazy G from NECR once again and I am back at it as always and loving it. Today we have a very special guest. He's the guitarist vocalist Tommy the Beast Blardo from the metal band Enemy Remains. Hello, welcome and thanks for taking the time to speak with us here at NECR. How the hell are you man? We're doing good man, thanks for having me on. Anytime. We're going to get right into it. For those who might be hearing of Enemy Remains for the first time. You are local guys from Newington, Connecticut. Can you just give us a brief description on the history of Enemy Remains? Oh, I don't know if you got enough time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, uh, we could just have, uh, we have the drummer from uh, the original band of Faith Warning, Steve Zimmerman on drum. We have Jeff Curtis from formerly of Obsession and uh, Stick Pen on bass. We have Frank Warren that's pretty much brand new to the music game. He's not really been in the scene. He's actually been doing something else. He's on vocals. We've got Scott Cadis from a band called End Time Illusion. He's now with us on leads. And uh, Danny Bright on keyboards, a longtime friend of ours. Ah, nice, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, Fate's Warning. I recall them guys from way back in the day. Oh, yeah. They're pretty well known. <laughs> yeah. You guys have a new CD out. Well, actually, you have a new CD that will be coming out on January 20th called No Faith in Humanity. What can you tell us about this CD? Uh I mean, we're very, uh, we went a whole different direction on this CD from the past. The first album, we kind of went back to our old roots, but we tried to mix it up with the new modern sound of today's music because we didn't want to, he didn't want it to be compared to the old days of Fate's Warning either. He wanted to separate himself from that and show a, new, a different direction in his drumming too. So we pretty much feature a whole new style of drumming on this album. The artists are just all pros. I mean, everybody at their position is just phenomenal. And the songwriting just, you know, Jeff kind of recorded down in Florida. Florida, kind of, we blew his tracks up here, and he kind of did his own thing. I mean, he put a whole new flavor on a lot of the songs. So everything came together real, real good. And it, you know, it's a different, different type of music for most of us. So we're trying to be more relevant in the scene you know, of you know the music that's out there today. Right. I got to be honest with you. This CD to me is ferocious. Oh, thank you. Especially the track "Trust in No One." What's the story behind that track? I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Everything we've all been through in our in our band careers. This album is kind of based off of that and kind of uh, kind of what's going on in today's society, man. We're just, we kind of put a bunch of music together, which we didn't plan on doing, just kind of wrote, you know, when Frank started writing the lyrics to the track, kind of started to become a theme to the album, so, uh, you know, it, it's pretty much what's going on in the world today. I mean, it's like, you know, a lot of people say that you're funny, you're this, you're that, they promise you this, they promise you that. The song's pretty much based on those false promises, you know what I mean? And, you know, we've all been in bands, you know, we're, we're no rookies to the scene, us guys, so we've been around all the bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and hey, unfortunately, you, you're, you know, I hate to s agree with you on that, but you're right in many aspects. It's pretty cool that you can put that into into a song, and I want to say nail it pretty much, you know? It's a very cool track. Another vicious track is the self-titled track, No Faith in Humanity. What was the process like behind that track? That track was pretty much when we changed the whole direction of the band. We pretty much, Steve, me and Steve were right now behind the scenes as we were working on some old enemy stuff and uh, we kind of just said let's give it a shot and we found this singer Frank Warren he wasn't doing anything he was actually coming off another band but hasn't been in the scene very long at all and we just kind of gave him the track because we never had the right vocalist for this band that's pretty much been you know we're like ah uh, you know we don't have that radio voice guy now we finally got that guy and what we flew him and he flew back to us was pretty much first take on that song and uh, we knew right from there that I think we got something pretty decent with this guy and uh, that track pretty much came together pretty fast because he and Steve wrote it, kind of sent it to Frank, like, oh, let's see what this guy can do, and he nailed it. Pretty much what you hear on that album is pretty much what he wrote first shot. That's amazing, and I'll tell you, it's some incredible work. I really like it, and I'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to touch on one more track. Breathe Again is another solid track. What was the writing process on this one like? And maybe it's me, but I get the feeling the sound takes a different direction compared to the other track. Yeah, it, it does. It's actually a song we kind of brought back to life from an older song. I mean, that's an older 
platform we had done, but we put the new kind of flair with the new vocals on it. But it is it is very different than the other one. Yeah, it's something that we kind of just remastered and mixed and kind of put a new flair on it, brought the new players on board with it, and uh, that's pretty much how that song went. It's great that it all came together for you guys on this one. And like I said earlier, you know, before the last question, I really dig this CD. What would you say was your favorite part about making this CD? And did it come out exactly the way you guys planned it? Well, here's the deal on the, on the whole thing. Uh, we set a record date of, uh, I think it was October 30th of last year. Signed with Gateboard Marketing and they said, oh, okay, we're going to release the album on so and so date. They released the single back in August. And at that time that we released the single, we had not one song written, not one part written. Wow. For the album. D and D pretty much locked ourselves in a room and just kind of just lived with each other for like two months. And let me tell you, it was hectic because we were under a lot of drag. But the album came out. I mean, it doesn't show on the album, but a lot of it came out with just you know we were just we just lived the music for and just going about you know everything that was going on with the politics in the world and all that stuff. And it pretty much wrote pretty fast. This whole the whole album pretty much wrote real fast for us. It really did come out. I want to say amazing. Uh, I enjoyed every track off of it. What was it like working with Chris Zeus Harris, who mastered this CD and has worked with artists such as Rob Zombie, Queensryche, and Hatebreed? It's, you know, it's always a pleasure to get somebody behind you with that kind of credibility and for him to even want to do some of our stuff. We're like, because we work with Dexter's Lab, Nick over there, and Nick's amazing himself. I mean, Nick pretty much nails it before it even goes to Zeus. Zeus just puts the little sugar on top, but I gotta tell you, before it even gets to Zeus, the album sounds amazing already. Zeus kind of flares it up and really makes it his own, and you know, you don't have much communications with Zeus because you're pretty much going through the studio. Zeus will send us a couple of different versions and he'll be like, what do you think? You know, it's <laughs> like, he'll send you like A, B, C, and D, and it's like, oh, I can't even tell the difference. They all sound great. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. No, he's an amazing guy to work with. Well, he did an amazing job on this CD, let me tell you. I, I really enjoyed it, I have to say. Why did you decide to go with a couple instrumental pieces on this? Any particular reason? Well, you know, yeah, well, it kind of fit the theme of the story we were trying to tell with the album. You know, the, it's an emotional, uh, these songs are very emotional to us, and to what we're trying to tell everybody, and, you know, with this world hating on each other, and this one and that one, and we're trying to bring the mood to the music, so, you know, we're trying to bring you through an experience with it. So the keyboards brought a, you know, a real nice layer to it, yeah. the emotion side of it. And a lot of people have said that, too, like, wow, you know, even on some of the parts where they slow down and you kind of reminisce on, you know, stuff we're trying to say in the song, so it was very important to bring those pieces in. According to your website, www.enemyremains.band, you have a few shows coming up locally. What do you want to say about those particular shows? Well, the t first show we're playing is this Friday, so it's place, and it'll be the first time that we're taking the stage to do this whole album from its entirety. So we're, uh, we're pretty nervous about it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're pretty excited to take the stage finally after all this hard work. And, uh, you know, I actually just picked the bass player up. Jeff just landed from Florida, so he's actually uh, with me right now. And uh, we're going to start rehearsing for the next couple days, and uh, we're going to nail it. And then uh, the show after that, I think we have Nine Point at the Webster February 8th, and I think there's another one in Bristol. Yeah, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, we're excited to get the new guys on stage and really show show the professionalism of this band. And it sounds it in this latest CD, you know. Definitely check it out, people. Enemy Remains, the new CD, pretty awesome. No faith in humanity. Enemy Remains has a pretty strong local following from what I can see. What would you like to say to those fans that have stuck by you guys for so long? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody, man. We took a little time off because, uh, I don't know if Everybody knows, but these did some fate shows last summer. So the band was on hiatus for about two years, so he can go back and do his fate reunion, the uh, big Awaken the Guardian show. So we kind of stepped back, and, and I appreciate all the fans sticking by us, and they're all hitting us up again and thanking us we're back, and they love the music. And it, you know, it sucks for us because we want to let everybody hear it right now. We've been like on a gag order for so many months, but uh, shortly the CD will be out on the twentieth, and uh, you know, a lot of pre-orders are being sold already, and we're hearing nothing but good stuff about it, and we appreciate the. No brown nosing with me. I, I really did like the entire CD. It, it, you know, I hate using the saying "a uh, breath of fresh air," but it really was. It was something different that I don't know what it was. I couldn't put my finger on it, but yeah, every track really struck a chord with me. And uh, great stuff, man! Congrats to you guys. I hope it does very well for the band. Yeah, we hope so too. It's pretty cool because we're hearing a lot of people. 
people that were doing interviews are kind of saying the same thing. It's like different and it's refreshing, and that's very cool. That's what we were going for. We didn't want to hear, oh, you sound like this one. <laughs> we didn't want to hear that. <laughs> right. Hey, I don't blame you, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were pretty happy with it, and I, I want to thank you for all your support, man. Hey, anytime. Listen, I, I love music, all kinds. Metal's my favorite, as I tell everybody all the time. You know, you guys give something that nobody else can, and it's a pretty amazing thing to do, and I'll tell you, I could never do it. I know a couple artists have, I've said that to, and they're like, oh, no, you could, and it's like, yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> so kudos to you guys. You really did put out a, a solid product on this album, No Faith in Humanity. All I have to ask is, other than the release of the new CD, No Faith in Humanity, and the show's coming up, is there anything else planned for Enemy Remains in 2017 we might not know about? Uh, there is a couple of to be announced dates, uh, one out in uh, Brooklyn, there's Vegas, and there's one in Florida. But yeah, we're putting together, everybody's scattering real fast because the album is doing so well before it's even out. So we have a lot of people behind the scenes really making a lot of stuff happen. So it's pretty much going to happen real quick, and we're probably going to be doing a full tour support this summer for that album. So we're excited about it. Yeah, I'd like to see you guys do a full tour on that. Yeah, us too. That would be super for you guys, you know? I don't want to take up all of your time here. I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy, the Beast, Bardo, guitarist, vocalist for the metal band Enemy Remains from Newington, Connecticut. This CD is stellar as far as I'm concerned. Check it out, people. No faith in humanity. I thank you, Mr. Blardo. Uh, yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. I wish you guys the best. I wish No Faith in Humanity the best. I really hope it's well received, and uh, I hope you guys nail it with this one. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. And we'll be hopefully uh, talking again soon. Yeah, call anytime. All right, sounds good, man. Okay, buddy. Talk to you soon. All right, thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Tommy the Beast, Blardo, guitars, vocalist for the metal band Enemy Remains. I am Greg, a.k.a. Crazy G, for NECR New England Concert Reviews, and I am out of here. Have a good one. I'll be back. Peace.